our spiritual vision can also become blurred over time because there's so many lens out there. Hello, my dear friends, and welcome back to Dr. Hester Speaks, a Women of Integrity Ministry channel. Welcome back, subscribers, and welcome to my new subscribers. We are growing thanks to you. If you're visiting for the first time, please be sure to hit the subscribe button right below this video frame. And at any point during the video, if you've liked it, please give it a thumbs up because that helps the channel as well and it helps us to be able to produce more content to support women. My name is Dr. Hester and I'm a life coach, I'm an educator, I'm a conference speaker and an author and this channel is dedicated to developing women of integrity all for the glory of God because we believe his word that says that he knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He knitted together your most innermost parts, and He gave you a divine purpose, a divine passion, and a divine path. And He wants you to know the truth about your God-given identity. And our goal is to help you facilitate your personal development in these areas. Today's discussion is entitled, How to Transform Your Vision. Connecting to God's grace. In this video, we will explore the insightful and transformative power of grace from God through His perspective and through His lens. We're going to discuss how grace and love can impact our lives in ways we never imagined. So grab a pen and pad and record questions for comment that you may have during this discussion. Are you ready? Let's go. Our specific topics today are defining grace, embracing grace, living grace. Defining grace. Grace is defined as unmerited favor from God, a foundational principle in our Bible. Grace is God's undeserved love and mercy that's extended to everyone. And John 3.16 is a well-known Bible verse that's associated with this principle of grace. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So now that we have the definition and we know the word, the next step is to embrace the word. Embracing grace. To embrace grace, we must first embrace John 3.16, which means to accept, believe in, and internalize the message conveyed in this verse. This also means accepting that God sent his son Jesus Christ to earth out of love for us so that those who believe in him can have eternal life. See, this is the promise for everyone. This is the core message of our faith. 
God loves us and he offers salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. God extends a powerful expression of grace to us in John 3.16. God's love, the gift of his son, and also eternal life through belief in him. God's love emphasizes God's great love for the world, his people. The love of God is the basis for his grace towards us. God's love is unconditional, sacrificial, and all-encompassing, demonstrating his grace in action. God gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, as a gift to the world. The act of giving Jesus to die for our sins is the ultimate demonstration of God's grace. It shows that grace is a gift freely given, not earned or deserved. And he gave us the promise of eternal life for anyone who believes in Jesus. This promise of salvation and eternal life is a manifestation of God's grace towards those who put their faith and their trust in Him. So God forgives us, He gives us grace, we in turn forgive ourselves, and we extend that same grace to others. The core message is God's love, His mercy, and grace for all humanity, and the hope forgiveness and salvation to all who accepts Jesus Christ through faith. And faith, remember, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And Ephesians 2 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Embracing grace means accepting God's love, accepting his forgiveness regardless of our shortcomings, regardless of our mistakes, and regardless of our failures. It's a gift freely given, not earned through our actions or our deeds. So now that we have embraced grace, we are equipped to live it. Living Grace Now that we have the knowledge, we must implement that knowledge in our lives. In other words, we have to live the life. So how do we do it, especially doing challenges? Well, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit helps us to accept and to live in God's grace. For example, through conviction of sin and subsequent salvation and transformation, as we mentioned in John 3.16, through the development of the fruits of the Spirit, and through intercession to strengthen us in our faith and to help us rely on God's grace. The Holy Spirit allows us to intercede. The Holy Spirit plays a crucial role in guiding, empowering, and transforming us to understand and embrace God's grace. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, we can experience the fullness of God's grace, and we can extend it to others as well. We can see examples of this working through the lives of many in the Bible, folks like Ruth, Mary Magdalene, and Rahab, just to name a few. What about you? Do you know individuals who have received grace and they continually extend it to others and it has impacted your life? Or maybe there are others in the Bible that you recall that have impacted your life. Let me know what you think. Put it in the comments. It may help someone. So remember Ruth, 
She was known for her loyalty and devotion to her mother-in-law, Naomi. And after Ruth received grace and kindness from Boaz, who she later married, she extended grace to Naomi by caring for her and providing for her needs. She received grace and extended it to Naomi. And remember Mary Magdalene. She was a woman who had been healed and forgiven by Jesus. And after experiencing grace and forgiveness from Jesus, she became one of his most devoted followers and was present at his crucifixion and his resurrection. Mary Magdalene then shared the good news of Jesus' resurrection with others, extending grace to them through her testimony. And then there was Rahab, a Canaanite woman who helped the Israelite spies escape from Jericho. And in return for her assistance, the spies promised to spare Rahab's family when they conquered the city. So Rahab received grace and mercy from the Israelites, and she later became a part of the Israelite community. By extending grace to the spies, Rahab earned her redemption and inclusion in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Here we can see that these individuals found peace, healing, and transformation by accepting grace and extending it to others. They were seen through the clear lens of God. And these examples tell us that we too can live a life that is consistent with practicing and embracing grace. Living in grace involves extending that same grace that we've received. It involves loving God and giving love and mercy to others. Has your natural vision become blurred over time? And if so, did you realize it on your own? Or did you have an external experience which brought your blurred vision to your attention? That can happen. I remember years ago, I went to the DMV to renew my license and I could not pass the eye exam. My vision had become blurred over the years and I had not even noticed. So I had to get glasses, new lens. It can happen. Our spiritual vision can also become blurred over time because there's so many lens out there. And while other lens may distort or mislead us in what we see, Viewing the world through the lens of Jesus Christ corrects our natural distortion and helps us to see more clearly, to see things as they really truly are. So stay connected to God's word so that you are reminded daily that grace means showing kindness, compassion, forgiveness, and mirroring God's infinite grace towards you. In summary, as you navigate life's challenges and life's relationships, embracing grace can lead to understanding, reconciliation, and unity among us. Challenge yourself this week. You know, think about ways that you can extend grace in your life. Stretch your comfort zone and share your thoughts in the comment. Embracing grace from God's perspective is the practice of ongoing humility and love. It's an opportunity to experience the depth of God's love and mercy in your life and to share that love with others. So today, we've discussed how to transform your vision, connecting to God's grace. Our topics were defining grace, 
embracing grace and living grace. So thank you for joining me today as we discussed transforming your vision, connecting to God's grace. I hope you've been blessed. May you continue to walk in the light of grace and love, knowing that you are deeply cherished and accepted by a gracious and a loving God. By filtering your circumstances through the lens of His Word, grace, and His love, you can gain a broader view of His eternal perspective. You will get a clear view, not because your circumstance changes, but because your perspective and your vision changes. My prayer for you is that you would intentionally put your focus on Jesus and embrace your uniqueness and all that God has given you. Know that through His lens, He sees you as right and justified because you are the King's daughter, because you believe. And finally, that you would walk in the knowledge that Jesus Christ is so much greater than your flaws, your struggles, and your past. So remember, subscribe, watch the video, like, share, and add a comment just to say hello even. You can also connect with me on Instagram, X, Facebook, LinkedIn, and TikTok. Because the timeline of videos are limited, I realize that many of you may need additional information or additional assistance. So if you want to get expert help on personal or professional development for women, or if you need assistance navigating or implementing video topics such as the topic today on grace in your life, feel free to email or click the link below to contact me. I'm also available for speaking engagements and events as well. So until next time, you stay blessed and keep the light shining. I'll see you next week.